And here is the orange open range, long range system. Now this is a bit of an old one, it's this 100 milliwatt one, so it's not the newest one. I've had this laying around for a while, I've been meaning to review it, so I'm going to take a look at it now. Let's, this is the JR type module, or the one that fits on the 9X and the Tyrannus. Let's take it apart and see what's inside. There's not a lot in there, is there? As we can see, there is the, again, we have one of these little daughter boards, these little tiny boards. I'll just zoom in on this so you can see more closely. These little boards are so often used because they're cheap as beans, you can get them off the shelf, and they're really easy to program uh, the microcontroller to drive them. Now, what I don't like about this particular one, of course, is, as I said, these crystals, old school, not so bad in the transmitter where they're not going to get knocked around. I hope they don't use them in the receiver, but odds are they're going to be using the same module board, modular board thing, so you just have to take what you can get with those. Now, this has a uh, coax off to the thing, so this should just pull apart by the look. Yes, it does. Look at that. So what's on the other side? Well, here's all our digital goodness. We've got our processor there, and that processor is, excuse me while I have a look, it's an Atmel AVR processor, so that's, you know, See the Atmel or PIC, and they've used an Atmel here because these are cheap as beans and they do the job very, very well. We've got a buzzer in here, regulator, a couple of LED status LEDs. This is the bind or whatever button, I suppose. And these are the pins that go off to your module, I guess. Is it? No, they go, that must be for programming. What have we got? The module pins are on the other side, you idiot, Bruce. There they are. The module pins over here. That's connectors here for the module. Go into the back of your transmitter. So there's all these other pins and things uh, for programming and other purposes. I haven't looked at the instructions yet, but there we go. Construction-wise, that's not a bad piece of board. It's got green solder mask, so you can see what's happening. It, um, yeah, it's well. The soldering's good. The, the layout seems reasonably good. Nothing to grizzle about there. I say my only concern is these little modules, which are going to limit what you're doing. But as I say, this is an old one, and I think they've upgraded them to the higher power now. So this is more of an academic exercise just to see what an open source low cost UHF looks like. And here is the open long range, orange open long range system receiver. We can tell that by the little label on the front. And it's a vertical pin receiver, lots of pins here to get binged about, I suppose. SMA connector on the end, not a big problem. It's got this foam pad on the back which comes off and oh no, look at this. Look at that crystal standing up there just waiting to get bowled off. As I said, these crystals, not so good, but hey, it'll work, it'll work. Um, and it's really quite straightforward. It's just the companion. This is just another one of those little modules like we had in the transmitter board there. Um, and obviously under this label here, if I can get it off, there's all the digital goodness. And we've got our Atmel processor in there. Um, just some other bits and pieces. So yeah, it's, it's all, you know, as you would expect. And uh, yeah, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. And the nice thing is it's open source. So I'm really only including it in this review as a, as a comparison because what's gonna happen is I'm going to uh, have to get the new version of this, the more updated version, to give any real tests. Testing this is a little bit unfair to test this product that's as old as this, compare it against the newer products, the commercial products that we've looked at in the other videos here. But that's just to give you an, you know, indication. Uh, Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> they should have, if they, why couldn't they put that on this side so at least the pins would protect that crystal somewhat. Never mind, that's the orange long range UHF receiver.